Hey, what's up everybody? Hope everyone had a wonderful holiday. Great 4th of July. Today we are out on the Cumberland River. Absolutely beautiful morning. And we're gonna be fishing one of my favorite craws, the Rage Craw. I got this bad boy in green pumpkin. Make fantastic trailers for jigs. One of my all time favorites. However, today, sorry, I'm trying to pull one out right now. Today we're gonna be fishing one, just the one eighth ounce bullet type sinker on a 3 eye EWG hook. Trying to uh, get on really whatever's willing to bite this craw on the river today, and uh, I'd say majority of the species will, though I do expect to probably catch some spotted bass. They have been running a bit lately. I've been seeing them jump out of the water just on my way down here, so see what we can do uh, today. But hope y'all enjoy the video and get to it. I'm gonna rig this one up and uh, get this bait out on the water. Good fish, guys. Oh, yeah. Come on in. That's got to be a drum. Come on now. Come on now. Got me bowing. Oh, yeah, that's a drum, all right. <laughs> Drums like the cross. Got you there. Yeah, I don't think so, my friend. All right, guys. Get you up here. pretty one these are beautiful fish I oh, mean you can see them as ugly but look at the coloring on them dang I hooked the ever living heck out of you my friend that's a pretty drum all about that river fishing love that you just catch just about any freshwater fish running through the Cumberland here and these drums are a big part of it. They put up one heck of a fight. They fight like a rock and they don't jump. At least not in my experience, which is nice. <laughs> All right, guys. Look at this good looking drummy right here. That freshwater drum, also known as a croaker and several other names people like to call them. This is a nice one. Nice, nice size. Not super big, but put up one heck of a fight where we caught her. I'm gonna get her back in. She's rigging up hard. And we pulled her in on our uh, Rage Craw right here, just slow popping her. Take my time and re reset this one nicely, considering we got a uh, boat that just ran through, kind of shaking up the water. Give it some time to settle as well. All right, we cut our craw back, so just gonna stuff the uh, tip of that hook right up in that plastic. Nothing too crazy, but it'll help us prevent some snaggage. I won't get back in, try to get a couple more on. I had a feeling it was a drum because hitting it that far away, that kind of weight, that was either a big bass and I would have jumped by the time I brought it in or a, a drum and starting to get used to their fights out here. Catch a lot of them. Anyhow, get back in the water, guys. <laughs> Bye. Get on in here now. There we go. <laughs> Beautiful little spotted bass, guys. Look at the size of that that fish taking that craw. That always amazes me. Absolutely beautiful. That white belly. They're really easy to, uh, almost easier sometimes to identify when they're smaller. Got bright white 
bellies, this kind of stripes running through them, right, right below that lateral line. And uh, the spots aren't really that dark yet on top. They also have red eyes around here and the really defined uh, gill plates. All right. Thank you for taking the bait, my friend. Okay. Well, we're having a just a lovely multi-species day out on the river. I love that green pumpkin. All right, that's a nice bite. Just hopping it back. Another drum. Just getting a lot of drum today, a lot of little ones. Now, when they're little like this, I'll just grab them like this. You guys do catch them. What's up, little buddy? They got little teeth, but you can lift them. When they're bigger, I lift them and I'll put one uh, hand underneath them for support there. Um, they're just easier to control that way. When they're little, you can usually grab a hold of their body and they're not going to wriggle too crazily. All right. Put <clears throat> my foot in over here. So the reason I I chose this spot now it can be a uh, difficult sometimes to bank fish a river um, 100% when I first started doing it being mainly a pond guy before that or a lake dude I struggled a lot um, I kind of slowly learned what to look for and how to get a productive day out of the water I mean sometimes you just you're just gonna take the L for the most part though um, you can identify these spots so everything is going to look kind of similar. You can see that bank right out there. Ooh, there's a good fish, guys. Or did we just lose it? I think I lost it. Yeah, too slow on the draw. Wow. Really tugged on that craw, though. That's what I get for not paying attention and trying to pan out. <laughs> Anyhow, guys. So, oh, we got a bit of a frayed line. I should probably retie, but you know what? I guess we're just gonna be lazy right now. We'll retie next cast, probably. So, I like to take two main baits. Today we're just using one. I like to make these episodes with one bait in particular. It's kind of the whole point of this, uh, these videos I'm putting out, just to show how to work certain baits and the baits I enjoy and find unique ones and common ones like this. However, try to be helpful. Anyhow, what I learned about fishing rivers is to identify features that are somewhat different than the rest of them. So a lot of this is going to look extremely similar. Wow, something is just hitting us, guys. Um, yeah, very similar. However, this spot is different due to the fact that you can kind of see these rocks. Now, they run out about 10 feet. There's about six of these ridges. You can't really see now because the river is so high. But when it's low, you can stand out on them and fish that way. However, having that high water, there's going to be all kinds of cover in these big old piles of rocks out here. These fish are going to hide behind. Also shade. Shade's a big thing on a hot day for me. So, shaded areas, these trees hanging down, just make a fantastic environment for bait fish to flock to and for predatory fish like your bass and your drum and that sort of thing to come and flock to. It's just going to be a really great spot to kind of post up and fish at. That's fantastic. All right. Let me unsnag myself and we'll get back at it. However, looks like we're going to have to break this bad boy off. Mm -hmm. Guess it's a good thing I didn't retie, huh? All right, guys. So when I am rigging this one up, I just broke off. Grab our hook. Grab our uh, little bullet weight right there. I'm just using lead today on the river. Um, if I, uh, we got a current, so I'm not 100% relying on feeling that bite, feeling the subtle bites really, as much as I'm uh, willing to sacrifice some tungsten for it, which is quite expensive. So I'm just gonna stick with the lead. Um, throw this hook on. Yes, no peg. Um, when I am fishing the river, I do not peg my weights. Well, for cross, that is. For worms, mm, it really depends. 
move up. I'm just gonna tie that on real quick. And with that knot, reduce the old friction. And there we go. Struggling, struggling. And I do not have scissors on me, so we'll be biting them off. Now I'm just gonna stick this right up until that kind of first ridge. Pop it right through. If you're not familiar with this bait, it's extremely versatile and I highly recommend y'all throw it. Even if you're in an area where you don't see a lot of craws, these bass are gonna eat them. And we're just gonna dig the uh, tip of that hook right in the plastic, kind of reduce the risk of snagging. There you have it. Good fish. Oh, another spot of bass. Easy come, easy go. I actually caught that while I was falling down on these rocks, so would have been surprised to land her. <laughs> oh, nice. There's one. Oh, pulling. Okay, I think this is bass. Mm -hmm. Yeah, nice spot. Oh man, putting up a fight. Putting up a fight. Dang, got him right to the tongue. Be careful on hooking this bad boy. Sorry, buddy. Oop, got me too. This one for the both of us, huh? Beautiful. Getting those lines. A little more defined spots up there. Beautiful fish. Absolutely gorgeous. These river spots bite like no other guys. You'll see him jumping out of the water, chasing bait like something fierce. Wow. Such beautiful fish, too. All right, guys. Check out this gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous spotted bass. Extremely aggressive. <laughs> Gotta be a pound or under. However, it was fighting like a three pounder. It was just tugging on that line. I'm gonna get her back in. I'm thankful for you. You gorgeous little bass. Second bass on today. But a beautiful one at that. All right. Hey, what's up everybody? I hope y'all enjoyed the video. I had a great time making it as always. Hope everyone had a nice week. Um, enjoying your weekends. Had a great holiday. If you do celebrate the 4th, if you don't, I hope you had a nice uh, day, whatever you were doing. Uh, if you're in a different country or something rather than America. Um, anyhow, guys. So I got my boy Mars with me. What's up, Marzy Mars? He's a good boy. Look at those eyebrows, guys. He's a handsome pup. Oh, good boy. I'll leave you alone, buddy. Just kind of laying up next to me, hanging out. As soon as I turned on the camera, he jumped up on this couch. Um, so, we'll get into our bait. The Strike King Rage Tail Series Rage Craw. I love them. I love the packaging. I love that coffee scent. Comes in weighing at 0.93 ounces. That's just under one eighth of an ounce. Um, I like the plastic. It's got a good flap. It's a four inch craw really well made I mean I know I'm getting bit if I'm throwing one of these if they are biting cross so uh, big fan I love them as jig trailers I like fishing them solo um, this one is a summer craw actually so summer craw coloring I was throwing green pumpkin every bite I got in this video is green pumpkin however I ran through uh, the green pumpkins that I bought so I got the summer craw to show off. Uh, the thumbnail, I, th I believe it was uh, Bama Craw or Alabama Craw. My brother gave me a few of them. He lives 15 minutes away from a Bass Pro Shop, which I'm super jealous of. So he gets all the cool colors. Me, I'll settle for my green pumpkins, my summer craw, and my watermelon craws. Like those, those that get the job done for me. I basically, I'm trying to get close to the color of my water but slightly darker that's kind of what i go for when i'm fishing cross so your browns your dark greens that's what i look for 
uh, almost blending in, but not quite. Still kind of popping a little bit. I find that gets me a bit a lot more than throwing something super vibrant, like a crazy red or a crazy orange or something like that. So I rigged this up on a 3 aught EWG hook, so your extra Y gap hook. This is a heavy wire. Um, I couldn't tell you, and I won't put it in the description because I don't know 100% what hooks I was using. I buy Eagle Claws, I buy Gamakatsu. So when I open up that pack, I throw the excess in a tackle box and basically take them home, sort them with their uh, size on a tackle box, and they just accumulate and accumulate. So when I go out and I'm fishing these baits like this, I'm not going to open a, a brand new pack of hooks if I don't have to. So just grabbed a handful. So I, I don't, I don't really know which ones they were, but. Mm. They got the job done, that's for sure. I was running that with a 1 8 ounce lead bullet weight. Now these, of course I prefer tungsten. Who doesn't? However, these are extremely cheap, and at the rate I snag on my river, it's not even worth throwing tungsten. I might as well be throwing dollar bills into the water. So I'll be throwing my lead, and uh, you know I can still feel it. I can feel it enough to where I can get a good strike. So if I am fishing like a lake or something without a lot of current, like a pond, yeah, I'm probably gonna peg a, uh, a tungsten weight on there because I will rely more on sensitivity, that subtle bite. Here on the river, if I miss that subtle bite, I'm just gonna take it as an L and keep on throwing it. Uh, it's not a big deal. It's not worth me snagging up and losing a ton of tungsten. Uh, and uh, I also don't peg my weights while I'm fishing the river. So I like to throw them in and I like to let that current take my bait while that weight sinks. I think that helps me get strikes. It's what I'm comfortable with. It's what I've been doing for a long time. That's how I like to work it. I'll peg it if I'm fishing, like I said, a still body of water and I'm really relying on the action I'm imparting on that bait or I'm fishing it a lot slower. Uh, if I'm having to rip through cover, I'm gonna be pegging it. Otherwise, I'm not even gonna deal with it. So it pretty much wraps up our bait. You know, I'll get into the gear I was throwing it on. I opted to throw it on a medium type rod. So if I'm throwing one eighth ounce, I'm probably be going medium light to uh, medium. If I'm throwing quarter, I'm probably gonna opt for a medium heavy. So I was doing one eighth ounce, I could get away with it. The current wasn't ripping too bad. It was pretty glassy on the river. So I figured I'd go one eighth ounce. If I can get away with a smaller weight, that's what I'm gonna be using. Uh, my mouth getting all dried up from talking too much. So I was using a Dobbins Champion HP Extreme, my all-time favorite rod. I mean, I can't preach this rod more. I got two of them. I had to get one in heavy, one in medium. This is a medium 7.3 fast action rod. I can just fling baits. Its sensitivity rivals my NRX. It's $200 or so cheaper. I got that. It's got a clean wrap. I love it. It's aesthetically pleasing. I mean, just look at that, guys. And I've never had an issue with one. It's got fantastic guides, a wonderful grip. I mean, it feels so good in my hand. The two rods that feel the best in my hand, uh, the makes them at least, are St. Croix and your Dobbins. So. I just, uh, I could fish with it all day long and it's extremely lightweight and well balanced right there guys. So got that paired with a Metanium Shallow Spool Edition by Shimano and that is in a 7-1 by 1 gear ratio. So every, every little turn of that 7.1 of uh, our spool here. Um, which works just out A-OK. -okay. That's kind of my sweet number right there. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll mess with sixes and I'll mess with eights, but I like a good seven. And I'm running that. I like the shallow spool. It allows me to run lighter line. I'm running eight pound fluorocarbon. I am a fluorocarbon guy, I gotta say. You know, braid has its place and mono has its place with me. But if I could choose a line to use all the time, it'd be fluorocarbon 100%. Uh, of course, if I'm throwing top water, it's probably going to be mono. If I'm throwing like a frog or something, beating through grass, I'm probably throwing braid. Uh, anyhow, guys, I hope you all enjoyed the video. I hope everyone's doing all right. I hope you guys get some good fish on. And I will catch you later. Say bye-bye, Mars. Oh, you just trying to nap down there. All right, I'll catch you all later.